The original cordless router. In today's video, I want to make a router plane. This is a fantastic tool. Uh, even if you are a complete power tool user, this is a wonderful, wonderful tool, especially if you're cleaning out uh, the bottoms of dados and things like that. I have an entire video on how to use a router and how to set it up. If you want to see that, it's right over here. Um, also, I made one of these a long time ago. It was one of the first tools that I ever made for my own shop. Um, really simple tool to make, and you can make it with an old chisel you have around. So if you want to see that video, I'll leave that over here. Uh, it, the quality is not really good. It was back when I was first shooting videos, uh, but a lot of people still like it. And so there's some more information on that over there. But uh, without further ado, let's jump into today's video of making one of these for ourselves. Now, I know this is not white oak, but this is my second favorite wood. I have this a slab of cherry that I'm going to be working with uh, for another project. And I have these scraps on the end that aren't good for much of anything else, but they're perfect for this project. So with these scraps of cherry, I can lay out what I want for a router plane. Now you can make this any shape you want. And in this case, I actually wanted to make them kind of rectangular and boxy looking, uh, just to do something a little bit different. So I just found this template and uh, literally drew around it, and that was the shape of the router plane. I can uh, lay out as many as I want and uh, mark them how they need to be. I want to make little finger grip holes um, around the outside edge and so for that I'm actually going to be using the uh, brace and bit to bore out the holes. I'll drill most of the way through one side until the screw comes out then flip it around and drill from the other side so that I can get a nice clean hole. For the uh, the cutting hole that you can actually see the cutting work through I'm actually going to make it square with rounded corners so I'm using the template to mark out where the center of those corners are and I can drill out those holes as well. Once I've drilled out those holes in the middle, I can then use a uh, coping saw or a fret saw to come in and clean this out. Uh, just basically cutting between hole to hole. I'm staying a little ways away from the line so that I can come back in and clean it up a little bit later. Speaking of which, I can put down a scrap on the bench and then hold this in place with the hold fast and then can slowly come in with a chisel and remove the waste to take it right back to those lines and give you a nice smooth surface in there. Now on the backs of these I need a little bit taller space to hold the cutting iron against so I'm, so I'm ripping down a little bit more of this uh, scrap cherry making it uh, slightly uh, larger than the back about two inches long. Then I can glue this onto the back and it will give me a, something solid to attach the iron to. Gluing it on is a fairly straightforward thing, and clamp it up and away you go. But here you can see how it's actually sitting on the back here. And I'll be able to put bolts through this to then hold the iron in place in the, uh, the cutting hole. Now for the actual shaping, I'm going to be using rasps and files. Just choosing different coarse rasps to uh, fit the shape and working around it until it actually rounds out. And then I'll come in with something a little finer and a little bit finer. And I have a whole series of different files, rasps, and uh, uh, rifflers that I can actually clean this out and make it really nice and smooth. Then after all of that, I'll hit it with the bow sander. I made this a long time ago in the video. Uh, apparently people really like it. and uh, It's a really easy project to make. and makes projects like this very easy to give it that final smoothing. And uh, yeah, I just really like doing those. <laughs> Then uh, for this top piece, I'm actually just going to chamfer it a bit with a uh, block plane, and uh, then I think it's time to do some carving. I want to do a very simple groove running around this. I'm just kind of playing with new designs and feels, and I thought this would be kind of fun. So I'm tracing around with my finger, making a mark all the way around the outside, and then I'm going to come in with a V groove and, uh, and just run around it. It's a very simple, easy project, and it really doesn't take that much work. In a little bit of time you have this nice little bit of carving on top that makes everything pop out. While I was here I figured I'd put my logo in here with the, the double W and a uh, really easy uh, thing. I, mean, I kind of like how this came out. I may end up having to do it more often. Then the last thing is putting the hardware into it for attaching the, uh, the cutter. And for this I'm actually going to be drilling two holes through the back of this into the opening. These are uh, quarter inch holes that I can then put eye bolts through. 
Now these eye bolts need to be recessed a little bit into the body so that the cutter can pull them tight against the back wall. And I'm just using a very small gouge or you can use a, even use like an eighth inch chisel just to work out either side until the head fits down in. Then I'll cut off the excess on the bolt and uh, allow it so there's a whole, whole lot sticking out the back. One of these days I might get uh, brass bolts, but for now these uh, steel ones will do just fine. Now if you have a, a Veritas uh, cutting iron or another one from another company, you can actually um, put a groove in the back here for the back of the Veritas iron to fit into. It's just a, a simple diamond shape as opposed to square or round. And when the eye screws pull it back in, they'll pull it tight into that groove. I'm just using some boiled linseed oil and paste wax finish. I really love doing this for hand tools. It just feels good in the hand and it's a very, very simple finish that's hard to mess up. I have an entire video on this, so I'm not going into it in great detail, but uh, it's a, a, a ton of fun and I love the way they come out. Just, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using these. So there you go. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, a couple notes about this. Number one, uh, I didn't make the cutters for this in this video uh, because actually not only Wood uh, is actually going to be making those uh, for me and he's shipping those out from Europe. So those are going to be in his video. So if you want to see his video on how he actually makes the cutters, you can leave it. You can see that in the description over here. Um, I also have how I made one out of an old chisel in my old video, which you can see that in the cards as well. Um, they're really, really easy to make if you have an old uh, an old chisel or lying around. Another note is a lot of people are saying, well, why don't you put knobs on it like the uh, the Stanley, the Stanley 71? Um, well, the Stanley 71 is on there because the metal is, is, is very fairly thin and it's hard to grasp the metal, so you want a knob to hold on to it. But even when I'm using it, I'm rarely grabbing the knobs. I'm usually holding them right down here because you want your angle of push to be as low to the surface as possible so you're not putting a lot of leverage trying to tip it. So with these, I actually don't put a knob on it because the, the thickness is enough in the wood that I can hold on to it and work it through um, just like I normally would. So there's no need for a knob. Uh, but that's my personal opinion. Everyone might be a little different and you can make your router plane however you want to make it. Also on top of that, um, if you're watching this um, soon after it's been uploaded, um, you can win one of these. I'm doing a giveaway for 20,000 subscribers. Um, so if you want to find out more about that, I'll leave a link to that in the cards as well and down in the description. So definitely go see Not Only Wood and see how he made his cutters. And I'm looking forward to uh, giving one of these away to a lucky winner. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, these are a fantastic tool to have in the shop. They're relatively easy to make and just a good thing to have around. Uh, if you did like the video, please hit like and smash the subscribe button right over here. Also, I wanna say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel keeps going and why I can keep putting out information like this. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can do so down right over here. Also, if you like this video, feel free to check out one of these others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.